بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. I want to share with you a personal story that was very, very intense when I was at the University of Windsor, when I was doing my engineering degree. In one of the classes, known as the formable bodies, there was a midterm that was worth 40% of our final grade. I was studying very, very, very hard for the class. I was so ready for the class. And I was leaving the library, the Leddy Library, at about roughly 10, 11 p.m. at night. As I was leaving, one of the brothers was entering the library. So he saw me, he said, Majid, are you ready for tomorrow? I said, yes, inshallah, I'm ready. He's like, bro, I'm so nervous. I don't think I'm going to do well. I think I'm going to fail. And he may not have been someone that really follows up with homework and so on. So I said, you know what? I'm going to come with you. I'm going to go along with you to the library. And I will help you study, inshallah. So part of it, yes, perhaps reward. But another thing we all have to keep note of, to master something, teach it. To master something, teach it. So I said, if I were to help him, then I will be even more prepared for my test. So then I went and I helped him out, helped him out. And fortunately, we kind of lost track of time. We left the library at 4 a.m. in the morning. When we left this late, I told the brother, why don't you sleep over my place? Because I live right next to the university. He said, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure, 100%. So we went to our house. We went to the basement. I set up a mattress for him. I slept also in the basement. And he asked me, what time should we put the alarm at? The exam started at 9 a.m., ends at 11 a.m. So what time, if it's, a, let's say, a 10-minute walk, what time should I put the alarm? Raise your hand. 9 a.m., 8, 8, like wake up, fresh enough, right? Any other op options, answers? 8.30. 9.30, I'll be a little bit, because the exam starts at 9, right? So that's why he said, he's about 8.30. I said, Akhi, 6, Fajr. <laughs> See? 6 a.m., Salat al-Fajr. He's like, oh, God, you think we're going to even wake up, bro? I'm like, yeah, inshallah, we'll wake up. He puts in the alarm, and with no exaggeration, he comes... I don't know what time is it. I'm sleeping. He comes to me. Majid, get up. I'm like, HB, it's 10.30. I'm like, la. Wallah, oh, bro, it's 10.30 in the morning. I said, oh my, let me see. I'm like, oh my God. So I said, I, I, I'm going to leave. I'm going go to I'm gonna go. I'm going to go right now. Do you know where to go? I'm just going to run. He's like, bro, I'm not going. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, bro, doctor's note. <laughs> I'm going to go to some doctor, Jazallah khair, brother so-and-so, doctor so-and-so. Haji, please, my stomach hurts. Give me a doctor's note. That's what I'm doing. You go. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like I think I can do it in 30 minutes. So I get ready. He's like, bro, there's no way. So I was thinking about it. 10 minute walk. I got about 20 minutes. Can I do it? Can I not do it? Then I kind of broke down. I don't think I can do it. <laughs> so then I start thinking this whole doctor's note thing. How much does it cost? $20. Even though we have health insurance in Canada? Yes, $20. Okay. So I was thinking, like, should I go for it or not? So the brother left, and I was so nervous. I can't believe this. This never happened in my life before. I missed the exam. I was so ready. Now I have a zero. This is a 40% of my final grade. What should I do? Is it halal to get a doctor's note? Is it halal? That's what I was going through. Is it halal? Is it haram? Ya Allah. What should I do? I was nervous. I was anxious. My scholarship is on the... On, on the line. If, okay, you may get a D, but does it mean I'm maybe going to get support, a grant or so? Maybe uh, the professor will be disappointed. My mom, my dad, ah, yeah. what should I do? Uh, doctors, no. Doctors, no. It's halal because my life is on the line. Yes, my life is on the line. My life is not on the line. I'm lying. It's not. What should I do? What should I do? Ah, sent. So this is why I said, I'm going to try, no joke, I said, I'm going to try to Google search the life out of it for one person to say it's halal. <laughs> so I went fatwa shopping. When is it okay to lie? <laughs> what if I slept in and I had an exam? Amja, please help me. Sheikh, please. No. Until I remembered one of the mashayikh who he used to give us Friday khutbas. So I called him. I said, Sheikh so-and-so. Salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Sheikh, I need your help. And I told him the whole story that I just shared with you. So I said, is it okay if I go to the doctor and get a doctor's note just so the weight of the midterm uh, and it can be uh, redone, let's say three days later, I can reschedule the exam. They do that in university. 
He said, Akhi, is your life on the line? I said, no. Is the professor your spouse to grow the love between you? No. Is this a war? I'm like, well, they're kuffar. But no, 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 no. Are you trying to reconcile between people? No. He said, since you don't have any of these cases, you cannot lie. So I said, inna lillahi wa inna This is a disaster. So I go to my computer and I start typing the email to my professor. Before actually I put this lecture together, I went and searched for the professor. Many, this was a long, long time ago. So I looked him up. He was a very tough professor. So I just want to see what people say about him. And the top statement or comment about him, tough grader. <laughs> And I knew that, and that's why I was even ultra terrified. Like Rahma is like zero. Engineering people have no Rahma. <laughs> one plus one is two. There's no one plus one plus a little bit of Rahma. There isn't. May Allah help every spouse who's an engineer married to an engineer. I mean, may Allah protect us. Anyhow, so then I emailed him and I told the professors, hello, Mr. So-and-so. I want to be very honest with you. I was so prepared for the exam. You know me from class. I was so ready. I was leaving the library at about 11 p.m. I saw this guy, I didn't mention his name. I saw this guy walk into the library, and I said, you know what, let me help you out. We stayed up till 4 a.m. Then I told him, sleep over my place. He slept over my place. Then I told him, put the alarm for Fajr. No, I didn't say that for Fajr. <laughs> okay, so I told him the whole story. Then I said, we slept in. We woke up at 10.30 in the morning. He told me he's going to get a doctor's note. So I, it's okay, it's okay. That was, not, he was not the only one, okay? <laughs> All right, he told me that he got a doctor's note. And, and I called my sheikh, <laughs> my sheikh. <laughs> so I called my imam, my sheikh, and uh, I asked him if I can lie in this situation, and get a doctor's note. And he told me that it's not one of the three cases where I can lie. Taban, subhanAllah, young man, right? Just typing this email. And I really uh, wish that you understand my situation. Uh, thank you so much. And press send. Then I'm like, what was that, right? What was that? I gave him a halaqa. I gave the, the, the doctor so-and-so a lecture. So I was waiting, no response. I got so nervous. Khalas. Now you can't get a doctor's note on a different, what? Date. It's very difficult now to convince. I was sick yesterday, but I couldn't go. Then you have the doctor to hook it up. So I waited a day or two, and I was so nervous. Until one time I was walking in, on campus, and then a professor, another one, walks and sees me he was walking towards me and he saw me he's like what was that i'm like what was what he's another professor he's like what was that i'm like oh he's a muslim i'm like brother what, what was what he's like the email that you sent i'm like how do you know about it he's like the whole department knows about it i said really is that a good thing or a bad thing he said you're gonna hear the news you're a lucky man Dr. So-and-so, he appreciated the email so much. He'd never seen anything like that before. And you know how tough he is, but he's willing to put the weight of the midterm onto the final exam. So you, no makeup for you. But you have to put the weight of the midterm, 40% onto the final. Final was 55%. So my final exam is 95%. 5% was assignments. And I'm like, inna lillahi wa inna lillahi raji'un, bas bardu ayyash, alhamdulillah. So I start studying and I left all my other classes focusing on the final examination, studying, working hard. Ya Rab, Ya Allah, 95%, you can't mess up. And Alhamdulillah, I end up with an A plus by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alhamdulillah. Other classes I messed up. Brother, what does this have to do with today's session? Alhamdulillah, what saved us was saying the truth. What saved us was the sidq, saying the truth. Bifadlillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes things like that are shared to encourage us all, including myself, to remember my, my good old days. And to remember Allah saved you, ya majid, so stick to it. Allah will always save you, inshallah. This was an appetizer. This was like a lettuce in a huge main dish, an entree that you're about to hear, inshallah. Not from us, but from the greatest of generations that ever walked on earth. In the ninth year after immigration, after the hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ from Mecca to Medina, the Prophet was about how old? Ninth year of hijrah, he was how old approximately? Roughly. Close. He died 11th year, alayhi So he is 61, because he died at 63. So about 61 years old. Ninth year of hijrah, that was after the conquest of Mecca. Islam was spreading very much. Allahumma barik. 
Islam was spreading so much so that the Roman Empire started to get nervous. Allahu Akbar. The Roman Empire, we're getting concerned. So much so that it, one of the narrations say that the Roman Empire sought to assemble a massive army, tens and tens of thousands, to go finish the Muslims once and for all. Allah, we can't handle this, too much pressure. Let's face the Muslims head on, they're growing, let's end them. So this is one of the narrations. Now before I proceed, I want to go and talk based on the hadith of Ka'ab ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. Who's Ka'ab? Let me tell you about Ka'ab. Ka'ab is a grand companion. Ka'ab ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. He's telling you the story after he became an old ammu. Like he is really old. So old he even lost his eyesight. That was many years ago. He's sharing the story with us. It's in Sahih al-Bukhari. And then he says, back in the day, when this news was coming, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, pay close attention. He never proceeds in a battle and tell people the destination. He does not tell people where he's going. Get ready, there's a battle. Get ready, there's a fight. No one knows the destination. Strategic matters. Maybe someone will convey, leak information. Kaab said, except for this one. Why? He said, because the Romans, basically army, was massive. Tens and tens of thousands. One, the weather was extremely hot. It was the summer, the heat of Arabia. Two, I mean three, the destination, it was a long trip. It's not like, we you know, Mecca, Medina, Uhud, Badr. No, we're traveling. We're talking hundreds of miles. Four, there was not much rain and not much water. Five, we did not have enough rides equal to the number of soldiers. Yani 10 soldiers would share one ride every hour they switch. And they would walk. It was very difficult. Not just that. Ka'ab ibn Malik says, it was so difficult because that was the season where we harvest the fruit and so on. That's when we take off the dates from the palm trees and things of that sort. That's when we collect rent. Anybody here who has a parent that owns an apartment building, you don't ever dare to tell them, Baba, let's go on May 1st. Because that, that's when I collect rent. Right? I'll go mid of the month. You never tell an accountant, you want to go to Orlando in April? No, that's tax season. That's where I make my money. So it was so difficult because that's when they made their money and that was the time where they had to leave. So everything is at risk from the dunya perspective. And Kabir Malik says, I have never, ever, ever missed any battle in my life with the Prophet ﷺ. Not one battle I missed. Except one, but I have, I have an excuse for it. The Battle of Badr. The Battle of Badr was not initially a battle that was scheduled. The Prophet wasallam was going after Ir Quraysh, the caravan of Quraysh of Abu Sufyan. Things didn't work out. It turned into a battle. And no one who did not show up was admonished. Fair enough. But he said, hold on. But I attended something before the Prophet came to Mecca. What was that? Bay'at al-Aqaba, the Pledge of Allegiance of al-Aqaba. What's that? That was the pledge which the Prophet ﷺ and the people in Medina gave one another that we're now willing to host you, O Muhammad ﷺ. It was a very small group of people. Ka'ab said, I was one of that group. So he said to me, to be honest, to me, it's more beloved than Badr. That's what he said. This is more beloved to me than Badr. Though, he said, though most people talk about Badr because it's more famous. So then he continues. So he's telling you, subhanAllah, what he's going through, he said, but in this battle, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa every time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told the people, we have to go to this battle, we have to go to Tabuk, Ghazwat Tabuk, for those who are not known, that know the name, Ghazwat Tabuk. What does he say? He said the Muslims were getting ready in large numbers, so much so that if someone does not attend the army, no one will notice. Because there was no D1. What's D1? There's no one taking names. Okay, check in. Ahmed, uh, Yusuf, okay, in there wasn't. So the only way someone can know that someone didn't show up is from revelation. Did you get that? It has to be wahi from Allah that so-and-so did not show up. So then, what did he say, Ka'bin Malik radiallahu an? He says, from my case, when people were getting ready, and I think, I want you to think of a camp. Ever went to a camp before? You get ready for a camp, right? You, do you prepare the day before? La, a camp? You prepare a week, two weeks before, you got to order stuff from Amazon, a bottle of water, flashlights, batteries, I don't know, uh, uh, some type of mattress or whatever, because you're going to a camp. So he said when Rasulullah told the people, get ready, 
people start getting ready, purchasing stuff, ordering things. He said, for me, I said, you know what, I'm going to go, I'm going to start doing my stuff. فَتَفِقْتُ أَغْدُوا لِكَيْ أَتَجَهَزَ مَعَهُمْ So I started, you know, putting my plans together. I'm going to get this, inshallah, whatever. Then he goes and he says, فَأَرْجِعْ وَلَمْ أَقْضِ شَيْئًا It's like you go on Amazon to buy something. Then you go on every other website but Amazon. Right? Or you go on Amazon, but you go to every other product. Like, what is this here? Suggested items for you based on yesterday's research, right? Like, what is this? Right? And something you don't need. So he was just distracted. He was just like, you know what, not really putting so much effort into it. For he said, فَأَقُولُ فِي نَفْسِي أَنَا قَادِرٌ عَلَيْهِ You know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this tomorrow. Tomorrow I got this, all right? فَلَمْ يَزِلْ يَتَمَادَ بِي I said, man, I keep procrastinating. What's wrong with me? And he was so disappointed. He said, tomorrow I will work on it. Tomorrow I'll work on it. He said, until it was announced, everyone was ready. The, now the day of the camp. We're about to go to the car, get onto that van, you pack your stuff, and you load the car and travel. He's like, I'm not even half ready. Not at all. So I said to myself, I don't have anything ready. So I said, you know what? Let them go and I'll get an Uber. <laughs> right? They can go and I will get ready. And he said, I was never, I was never as rich and as strong as that day. Like that was my peak dunya, like means of strength. Because he said to the point that never in my life did I own two cars. But there were two cattle, two camels. But this was the time that I owned two camels. I don't know if you, about you guys, but if you own two cars, Michelle, that's a, for yourself, right? You know, someone has a car that goes to work and one car for the weekend. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, right? May Allah bless your wealth. Amir Rabbil Alameen. So he said, I had so much money that I had two camels. But he said, I kept procrastinating. Now, day one after the army has left. So he said, فَقُلْتُ أَتَّجَهَّزُ بَعْدَهُ بِيَوْمْ أَوْ يومين. This one, two days since now they're gone. I'll take care of everything very quickly. I'll pay off, you know, uh, quickly Amazon Prime, you know, overnight shipment, no problem, $35 order is not above 35. It's okay, I'll pay the fee, whatever the case may be. And one day passed by, two days passed by, did Kaab go? I still getting ready and I was not done. So I said, tomorrow I will work on it. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning for sure. Next day comes and what happens? It happens. This is the real example. This is how life works. How many times? Wallahi, be honest with yourself. In Ramadan, how many times the first day, Juzat 1, you missed it. Juzat 1. You're like, it's only one Juzat. It's okay. 20 pages. Right? And then you go to the Taraweeh next day. I, the Sheikh is reading from Juzat number 2. Okay, it's only two Juzat. I, I think I got this. Alhamdulillah, I read Quran very well. Right? You read Quran very well. Right? Okay. Oh, oh my God. Okay, I got this. I got uh, fifth day. Oh my God. Five. Is that, so twenty times five. That's hundred pages. Hundred pages. So if I go on YouTube times two speed, see that's what he started going through. That's what we go through. Many of us. Maybe many of us. Right. So he said, I kept procrastinating. I kept procrastinating until it was not possible for me to reach them in a way that I will join them in the battle. فَلَمْ يَزِلْبِي حَتَّى أَسْرَعُ وَتَفَارَطَ الْغَزْ خَلَاصَ Everybody left. So he said, even though I miss them, so I will not reach to the point, but maybe I'll reach them on the way back. I wanted to go, and I still didn't go. He wanted to be like, you know what, late better than never. He said, so when I remained behind, and it was a long trip, and I would to leave and walk in Medina. No, Medina is what? Empty. Very few people are there. He said the two groups, the two majority groups were either people accused of hypocrisy, people accused of hypocrisy, or people who are old and Allah gave them permission, let's say they're handicapped, they have a disability, a severe sickness, that they didn't go. So he said, I got so disappointed in myself. All the people left. He said about 80 plus people or so remained from the people who are perhaps accused of hypocrisy. Scab said, I was told after this whole thing was done, I was told, that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reached Tabuk, he asked about me. You know, what did he say? No one thought that anyone will recognize who's present and who's not present. Makan fi D1, remember I said that? There was no like attendance check. But he said, I was told when he, when we, when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi arrived finally to Tabuk, he said, Aina Ka'ab. Ma fa'ala Ka'ab, where's Ka'ab at? Anybody knows where Ka'ab is at? فَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ بَنِي سَلَمَةٍ One person from the Bani Salama, perhaps a relative of Ka'ab, said, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of Allah, I think I gotta tell you this. حَبَسَهُ بُرْدَاهُ وَنَظَرُهُ فِي عِطْفِهِ He's busy with dunya. He's a big shot now. Remember, because he said, I got so wealthy. 
He's a big shot now. He's so busy with materialistic stuff, dunya. He got fascinated by it. Now who went and defended Akab? Mu'adh Mu ibn Jabal. Mu'adh ibn Jabal said, Bi'sa ma qult. Shame on you for saying that about Kaab. Then Mu'adh directs his attention to the Prophet, not to that man. And you know what's so amazing? We know the one who defended. We do not know the one who criticized. This is out of respect. Maybe he repents. Maybe he changes his ways. So they kept that name anonymous, though they all know exactly who was that person. Allahu Akbar. But then Mu'adh said, Bi'sa ma qult, shame on you for saying that. Wallahi ya Rasulullah. Then Mu'adh spoke to the Prophet, defending Ka'b. He said, Ya Rasulullah, ma alimna alayhi illa khayra. We don't know anything about Ka'b except that he was a great man. He's a wonderful, you know what, honorable individual. What did the Prophet do? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fasakat. He remained silent. And one of the things you want to appreciate here is defending your brother and sister whenever they're being stabbed verbally, okay, or so, right in front of you, right? And backbiting and so on, gossiping, etc. As I perhaps shared it before and I share it again. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man dhabba an irdi akhihi bil ghiba, whoever defends their brother and sister when they're being backbitten right in front of them. Oh, you see this guy, you see this girl. In a negative way like that, and you defend them, Allah will never take you to Jahannam. That's it, for good, forever. You will never go to hell. أعتقه الله. And I mentioned it before, what if someone says, what if that person who defended eventually you know, starts sl slacking off and leaves Islam? No, Allah will guide you. For that moment, you defended your brother and sister. Allahu Akbar. As rewarding as it sounds, as what? As punishable it is to contribute. So you see both extremes of hope and fear. So Mu'adh chose to defend. Now, did the battle take place for those that know the seerah? Was there a battle that took place with a large number of Muslims against the Romans? Who knows? Ghazwa Tabuk. Was there a war? After all that, was there a battle? No battle. After all this, ma fi ghazwa, ma fi harb. Did the Muslims win or lose? How would they win when there's no battle? Huh? They did not meet, so the Romans were terrified. Like these people traveled all the way here. You see that? They went through the heat of the sun. They barely have money and they sacrificed. Almost the all Muslim men were there. Yeah. We're not facing these human beings. <laughs> we're, not, we're not. There's no way. There's impossible. Led by the Prophet Mustahil. We stay in our homes. So then the Muslims had that land free. Right? And then the other ones besides the Roman Empire, they're like, bro, if the Roman Empire didn't face them, we're not other kuffar around Arabia. We're not going to face them. Right? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he eventually finished the camping in Tabuk and now he's heading back to where? Where? Back home, which is Medina. The news came, usually there's a guy who like sends the like mail, but it was one horseman that goes perhaps very fast, says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is now returning. So Ka'ab ibn Malik, he said, when I heard the news that now the Prophet is coming back, now Ka'ab, remember, he did not go and he was so ready and he has no legitimate excuse. He said, I start thinking of every good excuse I can give. I start developing like a machine, like a laboratory. Ah, what should I say? What did I say? Well, okay, my wife was pregnant. I think that's how I, have, I had a death in the family. Yes, death in the family. And then he will understand why I did not join. What happens? Many, many of us go through that. Many of us go through that. There's a project you're supposed to submit and you're late for the project. What do you do? Ah, oh, think. صح? Some of us, they think. Shaitan comes and he whispers to you. Oh, I got a flat tire. Just tell me you had a flat tire. Okay, khas, flat tire, flat tire. Oh, now it's on Zoom. Uh, my, my, uh, Comcast got disconnected. Yes, Comcast got disconnected. And you're thinking about it. When you arrive late to a meeting. Oh, that's embarrassing. Oh, sorry guys, I had a connection issue. No, you didn't have a connection issue. You're on Instagram. You have an Instagram issue. <laughs> okay? You didn't. Subhanallah. So Captain Malik was thinking, what should I do? What should I do? What should I say? He says, I saw, you know, a lab, a lab in my mind of what to say. He said, And I went to my family members, the ones with wisdom, and I asked them, help me out. See, subhanAllah, shura. <laughs> what should I say? What excuse should I make up? And then he made up some stuff in mind. Then an announcement was made. There's three announcements. The second announcement was made. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Muslim army will arrive anytime soon. Khalas, it's a matter of moments. He said, when I heard this news, all the lies I prepared, I deleted them. No way. I want you to pay attention. I will read it in Arabic, inshallah. 
أني لن أخرج منه أبدا بشيء فيه كذب And I came to the conclusion that there's no way I'll be saved if I choose to lie. Allahu Akbar. I came to the conclusion that there's no way to be saved if I choose to lie. فأجمعت صدقة. خلاص. I chose to say the truth. That I have no what excuses. وأصبح رسول الله قادما. Third one, the Prophet has arrived. صلى الله عليه وسلم. Test. Ready for the test? Test on a Sunday? Yeah, on a Sunday. And a nice weather? Nice weather, inshallah. What was the first thing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam known to do when he comes back from a trip? Raise your hand. When he comes back from a trip. Go for it. Ahsanti khalad. Allah barik feek. He used to come to the masjid and yarka rak'atayn. Pray to rak'at. So may Allah help me and help us all. You come back from DTW or whatever the airport. If you're capable, pass by the masjid to rak'at, then head home. Perhaps Allah knows best to you know, reconnect your connection, reconnect your relationship with the masjid. Because when you travel, you kind of weaken that connection. And you want to come back. That's perhaps one of the wisdoms and Allah knows best. So, Ka'b ibn Malik says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came and he went to the masjid and prayed two rak'at. When he finished the salah, what do you think happened? ثُمَّ جَلَسَ لِلنَّاسِ He sat and he started to listen to people. May Allah grant us wisdom and strength, Amir Rabbil Alameen. فَطَفِقُوا يَعْتَذِرُونَ إِلَيْهِ Then groups of people, 80 plus people who did not show up came to him and they started to give excuses. I'll be honest with you, if I was able to make it, I would have been the first one. Actually, I would have probably been first row with you. But you know, subhanAllah, my arm uh, broke, right? And he probably wrapped it or something, making up stuff. And you know, I had death in the family. And actually, my wife went through labor, but subhanAllah, where's the baby? The baby, subhanAllah, anything, just excuses, excuses. And not once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, very far asked for evidence. Fair enough. He just, whatever they say, he takes it. So Ka'b ibn Malik says, فَأَخَذَ بِعَلَانِيَتِهِمْ So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he accepted everything they said. وَاسْتَغْفَرَ اللَّهَ لَهُمْ And he made dua for them. May Allah forgive you guys for not showing up. I understand your excuses. May Allah forgive you and Allah have mercy upon you. وَوَكَّلَ سَرَائِرَهُمْ إِلَى اللَّهِ but the Prophet, he relied on Allah to judge their intentions. Fair enough. So I will take what you said, even though it might not look, make sense that you have a broken arm because you keep doing this. Wallahi. Okay, you look like you're good, but okay, whatever. Right? So he just judged based on what is being said. And he let the hearts be judged by Allah. Then finally, who came? Ka'ab ibn Malik. فَلَمَّا سَلَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ Ka'ab said, when I came to the Prophet, I said, Salamu alaykum. تَبَسَّمَ تَبَسُّمَ الْغَضْبَانِ He smiled the smile of someone who's angry. You know that's going to be angry? Then he said, تَعَال. Come forward, Ka'ab. Come here, تَعَال. فَجَلَسْتُ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ So then I came and I sat right in front of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then the Prophet told me, مَا خَلَّفَك? Why didn't you show up? Is there, do you have something going on? Did you not just buy a new ride? Remember the two rides? Did you not just buy a new ride to carry you around? So Ka'ab said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah. I had this ride, Bala. Then Ka'ab, before telling his excuse or the reasoning or anything, he wants to give an introduction. Can we hear the introduction? He said, Ya Rasulullah, let me tell you something, please. If I sat in front of anyone on earth besides you, I believe I have the tools, the eloquency, the fluency in speech to get out of the problem. Allah blessed me. jadala. I was blessed with a way to speak. And I can get away with any problem, I believe. That's my belief. Besides you. Like, I don't think I can get away if I speak to you. For I will tell you exactly what's going on. Because if I were to tell you a lie, you may be pleased by me for a moment. But then Allah eventually expose me and then you will be angry at me. Or I have another option. I tell you the truth, exactly why I did not show up. You will be angry, but I'll be hopeful that Allah will forgive me. Subhanallah. In Hitta, even Ka'b ibn Malik radiallahu an, and this was very powerful, I learned it from Shaykh Ammar al-Shukri. He was not willing to please the Prophet at the expense of displeasing Allah. Unbelievable. Wallahi, I heard this and I paused. Pause the video, la pause. Ka'b ibn Malik was not willing to please Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the expense of displeasing Allah, not even for a minute. So what, why would some of us Struggle in a way, we all struggle, but don't ever try to please someone who's regular, not a Nabi, regular man or woman. 
La mom or father, la son or daughter, no one. At the expense of displeasing Allah, Ka'b did not do it even with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then he says, Ya Rasulullah, with that being said, let me tell you what happened. La wallahi ma kana li udr. From the bottom line, I dropped the ball. I have no excuses, not a single excuse. Not just that, Ya Rasulullah. He could have, he could have stopped, right? He said, not just that. I was never as ready for a battle as much as that time. I even had two cattle. I had so much money. I reached my peak of physical strength. That was the moment. So I had zero, zero, even in the minus of excuses. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he heard this, he looked at the Sahaba. Who? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi looked at the Sahaba. He said, Amma hadha faqad sadaq. As for this man, he said the truth. What is this kind of hint? Allah knows about the other 80 plus people. <laughs> he said, Amma hadha faqad sadaq. Then he told him, may Allah forgive you? Did he make dua for him? La, that was a major sin. You committed a major sin. You were commanded by Allah and by the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to join the army of Tabuk, to go fight the Romans in one of the biggest expeditions in the history of Islam. And you were able, fully capable, and he didn't show up. This is a major musibah. As a result, I have to wait. Ya Ka'b, qum. Go, stand up and leave until Allah judges on your case. The what will we do in the meantime? You are going to be boycotted. What? You're going to be boycotted. By who? By you? La, everybody. No one in Medina is allowed to speak to Ka'b until Allah judges. How is this going to get handled? Until we learn how this is going to get handled, no one is about to talk to you. So Ka'b says, when I left and I walked away, Tharu ilayya ahli. Some of his family members came to Ka'ab. Ya Ka'ab. His family members. Ya Ka'ab. Could you not give an excuse like the other people? What's the matter with you? His own family. Why didn't you lie? And then, listen. I know lying is haram. Okay, you go lie. And guess what happens, Ya Ka'ab? What happens if you lie? And you tell the Prophet. What does the Prophet do? Tell me. You guys tell me. The Prophet will pray for you. He's, they, did, they did some math. You lie. The Prophet makes dua for you. Allah accepts. None. So then Ka'b ibn Maliki says, فَوَاللَّهِ مَا زَالُوا يُنَبِّئُ إِسْ مَا زَالُوا يُنَبِّئُونِ They kept making me feel bad. Like, I messed up. I should have never said the truth. I should have lied. I should have lied. حَتَّى كِتُّ I was on the verge of going back to tell the Prophet وَأُكَذِّبُ نَفْسِي You know when I told you I have no excuses? Yeah, that's a lie. <laughs> I was trying to be pretty cool. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be like the only guy that says the truth. And he was actually thinking to go tell the Prophet that I lied when he actually said the truth. But before he made that move, he asked one question. What was it? He has one question. He asked his family, do you know anyone that did what I did and heard what I heard? And the answer was, only two. Two? Two people? Yes, there were two men who said the same thing. I have no excuses. And they were told, boycott it. Who are they? Two. Hilal ibn Umayya and Murarat ibn Rabi'a. So Kaab says, when I heard these names, Rajulaini Salihain, these are really good brothers. And they witnessed the battle of Badr, Shahida Badra. He said, when I heard this, I said, you know what? I'm not changing my mind. I'm going to stay on saying the truth. What helped Kaab stick to the truth? Good friends. Allahu Akbar. Good friends. Many friends. They don't want to lie. They don't want to say something that is wrong. They don't want to do that, which is haram. But the friends influence either right or left. Agreed? I remember one time, may Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. One time, someone was sending me a link to an event. What do you think about attending this event? This was many years ago. So this link was like a, a party and so on. And I remember a comment, without going into a lot of detail, that hurt me so much. Actually, I was about to cry. So hurt. You're like, bro, it's not that bad. But let me tell you. There was a comment by a, a sister. She said in this uh, party or and so on, I'm thinking to wear a very short skirt. I don't usually wear those. I, I feel uncomfortable. Help. Like, you're just like, what do you guys think? So you can tell the sister is on what? On the fence. Right? It's clear. On the fence. Uh, I'm uncomfortable. It's the first time I ever buy it. Then someone comments, oh, don't worry about a girl. which out of age. I have a short skirt too. You will look great to show up. I'm going to wear one. So then she replied back, oh, you made me feel comfortable. I'm going to wear it. She was on the fence and you, you could have given her good nasiha. She would have listened. May Allah protect us. 
May Allah grant us righteous friendship. Many times, even Kaab, brothers, sisters, Kaab, Sahabi, Sahabi, Prophet's friend, he was on the fence of haram and halal. Sahullah, yes or no? And what pushed him to the right was a good friend. So what about you and I who is not a companion level? One comment from a friend can take you east or west. May Allah protect us and grant us good friends. Ya Rabbil Alameen. So he said, since the friend said that, I am not changing my mind. He said, as a result, فَاجْتَنَبْنَ nas. فَاجْتَنَبْنَ nas. the people were away from us. And no one was saying salam. No one, salamu alaykum, no response. No one, no one. At all, at all. Not even the shop order, not, nothing. Abedin, absolutely not. He said, I used to walk in the markets of Medina. No one says salam. Tanakkarat li al ard. Wallah, he says, the land, the very land I lived and walk on is no longer the same. It feels weird. You know, like let's say you got a big problem at work. Next day you show up and you feel like the office is not really comfortable. The atmosphere is not the same because everybody's looking down. Everybody's away. This is not that land. This is not the Medina that I know. And he was so much in pain. He says, as for my two friends, they stayed home. They kept crying and crying nonstop. As for me, I was the youngest. And I was the strongest of all three. Like I was a young man. And I used to actually go to the market. I used to go to the masjid. And one time as I went to the masjid, I saw Rasulullah praying. And then after the salah, when the Prophet finished the salah, I looked at him and he was not looking at me. So I said, Assalamu alaikum. So then Kaab says, Wallahi, I don't know. Did he move his lips and say, Wa alaikum salam or not? He was devastated. Assalamu alaikum. Wallahi, what sin in the world is worth you putting your, yani the moment of seeing the Prophet at risk? Sahla. What moment? Wallahi, what video on YouTube, wala Instagram, wala whatever social media or any move in life is worth putting your sight to the Prophet on Yom Al-Qiyamah at risk. He says, Salamu Alaikum. He says, I was looking, did he move his lips? I can't confirm. He said, then then I used to pray right next to me. Comes early, Allahu Akbar, first row, a sunnah prayer, Allahu Akbar. He said, when I pray, I can feel him looking at me. You know when you're standing, you're not having eye contact, but I know you guys are looking. He said, then when I'm done my salah, salam and then I look at him, he looks away. When I look at him, he looks away. When he looks at me, I'm not looking at him. Then I switch and then back and forth. You can see Rasulullah this boycott is not because I hate you. This boycott is because I love you. Some people, subhanAllah, it works with them. Some people, changes them is pain. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Then he said, I was so sad. This is, this is devastation. This is so difficult. I actually climbed the fence of one of my friends. What? He jumped into his backyard. Why? He said, this was my best friend, Abu Qatada. My Habib, this is my Habib, my beloved. And I was really struggling emotionally. I was in one of my toughest moments in my life. So I said, Ya Aba Qatada, Salamu Alaikum. Fawallahi maradda alayhi salam. My best friend, BFF. Best friends forever. Abadan, not even wa alaykum as salam. No. Then Kaab said, Ya Aba Qatada, Ya Aba Qatada, I ask you by Allah. Do you not know that I love Rasulullah and Allah? It's a yes or no question. Just yes or no. Do you not know that I love Allah and His Prophet? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fasakat. Abu Qada doesn't even answer yes or no. Nod, not even a nod. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Then I repeated my question. Ya Abu Qatada, as'aluka billah. I ask you by Allah. I beg you, Ya Abu Qatada. Yes or no. Do you not know me? Your best friend. Whether I love Allah and the Prophet or not, فسكت. Then the third time he asked him, I beg you by Allah, answer. He was devastated. Aba Qatada replied. And he said, yes or no? He said, Allah wa Rasuluhu alam. Allah and the Prophet, they know best. Fafadat aynai. And I start crying. Not even this. This is now being doubted. Halas. This is, that's it. I know what I did was bad. Ya Rab. He knew no one can help. He came to the conclusion, not even the Prophet Sallallahu can help him. Not even the Sahaba can help him. Not even emotionally. Fafadat aynai. He said, while I was walking, walking in the markets of Medina, no one is talking to me, just walking by myself. And someone says, 
Who here knows where Kaab ibn Malik is? What? Who here knows where Kaab ibn Malik is? Who is this man? He was a Christian who was a businessman coming to sell some grains in Medina and he has something for him. What's that thing? We will tell you inshallah. But let's take a quick break. Seven minutes inshallah. Then we'll resume. بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى. بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. So we stopped where Kaab ibn Malik رضي الله عنه he's been struggling very 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 much and he has been walking in the markets of Medina and no one is talking to him, no one is replying to Salam, not at all, until one time as he's traveling, what happened? He said, radiallahu anhu, there was a man, Nabati, he's a Christian man who came and he should sell some grains. And when he came, he asked the people, do anyone know where is Kaab ibn Malik? So Kaab said, the people, the people are like pointing, he's right there. So then he came to me. And what in the world does this man want that came all the way up from north selling some grains? He said to him, Ya Kaab, I have a letter from you. A letter for me? From who? Min Maliki Ghassan. From the king of Ghassan. Before you even know what Ghassan or anything, a king sending a letter just for me? And the Arab at that time and in Medina and so on, they're not still that strong that everybody knows about them, that prestige. No. So a king of Ghassan comes to send me a letter? Yes. Who's Ghassan? What's that nation? Ghassan is a Christian tribe, tribe that was allied with the Romans. You see the connection? A Christian tribe that was allied with the Romans. Where did the Prophet وسلم, come from? From Tabuk where he was about to fight the? So it's not coincidence, right? As we learn from our teachers, it's not coincidence. They know what they're doing. Let's read the letter. Read the letter. Yalla, bismillah. Amma ba'd. So the king now has this letter written and now sent to Ka'b ibn Malik. فَإِنَّهُ قَدْ بَلَغَنِي Ya Ka'b, I have heard أَنَّ صَاحِبَكَ قَدْ جَفَاكَ That your friend, meaning who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is treating you harshly. He's no longer nice to you. وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْكَ اللَّهُ بِدَارِ هَوَانٍ وَلَا مَضِعَ And Allah doesn't accept and does not, Allah does not appreciate for you to live in a place where you are inferior, where your rights are not being given to you. Allahu Akbar, sounds very familiar. فَالْحَقْ بِنَا So come to our land. Come up to the Romans. Come up to the Ghassan area. Nuasik. We will mend your broken heart. We'll take care of you. And that's it. Very concise, to the point. Come, we'll take care of you. I know they're not nice. So when Kaab read this letter, this is, this is crazy. I'm going to be making money. <laughs> right or wrong? There's a lot of money in this. You know, I believe it was Imam Siraj, if I'm not mistaken. He said, you want to make a lot of money out of, out of writing a book? The most books that make you so much money, even if they're horribly written, books against Islam. He said, you will be rich. Support anything. So they know up there, up north, that this man, this Muslim man is broken. He's alone. So let's use that low point of his and tell him you have no rights. Come to our land, let's give you the rights that you deserve. And it happens maybe till this day. May Allah protect us, right? Your mom tells you not to eat and drink? Oh, really? Does she like encourage you or does she kind of force you? This, okay, let me, let me, okay, does she like twist your ears? Oh, can I actually record that if you don't mind? Thank you, sweetie. So what does mom tell you to do? May Allah forgive us. We smile, but this is serious. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Some stuff are dangerous, yes, I understand. May Allah protect the kids. But some stuff is taken out of proportion. Agreed? Oh, you don't want to learn this? Come on, what's wrong with you guys? Your mom tells you this is wrong? Go tell your mom that love is love. And coffee is coffee. And Khadija is Khadija. And Ahmed is Ahmed. May Allah protect us. And who, those who understand, they understand. Right? It's okay, why not? So what? May Allah protect us, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb. So Kabin Malik, when he got this letter, what did he say? وَهَذَا أَيْضًا مِنَ الْبَلَاءِ Ka'ab said, and this letter is also a test. This letter is also a trial and tribulation, testing my sincerity, testing whether I mean my repentance or not. فَسَجَرْتُهَا Then I went and I threw it and I burned it. Allahu Akbar. I'm not taking chances. And that's how we should deal with fitna. 
let me just keep the email unread, just me, I don't ever know what happens. La, delete. But these people are spam in a way, right? To him, Ghassan, I'm not even going to take a chance. I'm not even going to store it. I never know what happens tomorrow. What if the Prophet never comes, gets back to me with an update? La, I'm going to burn it because I'd rather die in this case than sell my deen for anything in this dunya. Allahu Akbar. So Kaab said, many nights have passed by. Guess how many? Forty. What? In this whole story you told us was not one or three days? La. He said, 40 nights have passed. 40 nights has passed until someone came, knocked on the door. Who was it? It was a messenger from the messenger of Allah. So someone is being sent on behalf of the Prophet ﷺ. What does he want? Someone is talking. Alhamdulillah. Talking to me. What is it? He said, Inna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet is commanding you. Uh, yes, to do what? To be away from your wife. Stay away from your wife. La taqrabha. Do not approach your wife. So Kaab, his response just shows you what he cares about. He, he asked, A Do I divorce her? Or what should I do? So the man says, no. You're not being told to divorce. Just don't approach her. Don't be intimate. Just stay away from her. So now even the wife, is with the entire Muslim community obeying who? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Look at the obedience. So then Ka'b ibn Malik, he said, okay. He went to his wife. He told her, go, go with your family. Go to your family's place until Allah decides about my situation. And she listens and she obeys Allah and Rasulullah and her husband. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. But Ka'b said something. He said, as for the wife of Hilal, the wife of Hilal, who are they, the, two, the two people? Hilal and Murara, right? As for the wife of Hilal, she went to the Prophet Wasallam. Why? She said, my husband, Shaykhun Da'i'. My husband is very dependent and an old man. And he has no one to serve him but me. Would you disapprove for me to stay behind and serve him? Because my husband's really old. He said, La, it's okay. You can stay. Allahu Akbar. The Islam, there's the Arahma part, right? It's things of extreme. No Islam intervenes and comes in and adjusts accordingly. Allahu Akbar. Then he says, La, walakin la yaqrabik. However, don't let him approach you. Don't be intimate. She said, Ya Rasul Allah, Wallahi, from the day the announcement was made of to be boycotted until today, he has no appetite, no desire of anything in this world. And all what my husband does, for 40 days, Ya Rasulullah was what? Cry. 40 days crying, Ya Rasulullah. So he approved the wife of Hilal to stay with her husband. Then Kaab radiallahu anhu, he had his one of his family members or so sneak a note or something. I don't know exactly how it went through, but they sent him something. You remember the family, sometimes they intervene, right? They say, why don't you go tell the Prophet to give an excuse? It's halal. It's not, it's not a lie, okay, Kaab? Tell them to have your wife stay with you the way the wife of Hilal stayed with Hilal. Can you do that? He said, La, I will not, Wallahi, la astadin. La, Wallah, I will not ask permission. He said, I'm a young man. Go tell the Prophet, ain't someone to help me? <laughs> He's like, I will never do that. There's no way. Look at this truthfulness, Ali, radiallahu anhu. Then he said, 10 more nights have passed by. So now the total is 50 nights. On the day of the 50th night, on the 50th day, he said, I prayed Fajr and I sat on the roof of my house and I was so down at a point that I never was this low in my life of grief, sadness, anxiousness, disappointment, all feelings together. I felt choked. I felt like this world is just so different to me. And I realized that no one can help me but Allah. While I, while I was sitting, I heard someone calling my name. Ya Ka'b ibn Malik. What? He said the name came as if someone came on top of a hill. Like the name, then that yelling is from very far away distance. Ya Ka'b ibn Malik. Abshir. Congratulations. He said the moment I heard Abshir, I went into sajda prostration. He said, I knew this means faraj. This means Allah's relief has come. This means there's good news, Abshir. So he was so happy. He said, then someone on a horse was running towards me so fast. I can see the horseman running, 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 running. And the guy, Ka'ab ibn Malik. He could not wait. The guy went on the hill 
could not wait to go to Kaab and knock on the door. Kaab, salam alaikum, good morning. Salam alaikum, I got something for you. Congratulations. He couldn't wait. That's how much they loved one another. That's how much they cared about one another. This boycott was not because we hate you, but because we love you. Allahu Akbar. And that man could not wait. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? The best of believers, the best of deeds, ahabbul a'mal ila Allah, sururun tudkhiluhu ila qalbi muslim. It's a good news, a wonderful news that you share with someone. A joyful moment that you can share with someone is one of the greatest deeds that you can do. And this man could not wait to say, knock on the door, I have good news. I'm going to yell while I'm walking to you. It's like you're texting someone, Hey, bro, I'm, I'm coming. Not not you're driving, but as an example, right? You call him like, I'm on my way, you know, come outside because of the urgency. That's how much he loved him, radiallahu anhuma. He said, then the man on the, on the horse came to me and gave me the same what? News. But I wanted to gift the one who gave me the news from the hill before the one that was on the horse. Why? He said, because the voice of that man beat the horseman. SubhanAllah, because he told me first. So thank you so much. Then the guy came, the one who was yelling. Kaab. Then Kaab said, I was so happy. I gave him my outer garment. Like, you know what, bro? This is my favorite jacket. Take it. He said, I took it off and I gave it to him. He's like, at that moment, wallahi, I had no garments besides the one I'm wearing, the exterior one. So I had to borrow. I had to like rent, <laughs> rent a suit or something, right? So he said, فَاسْتَعَرْتُ ثَوْبَيْنِ so Then I went and I rented two thobes. Then I went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's excited on his way. What's going on? What do you guys think? Imagine. Groups and groups, fawj and fawj, groups of people coming. Congratulations, Kaab. Congratulations, Abshir. Congratulations. لِتَهْنَكَ, لِتَهْنِكَ تَوْبَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ Be happy. Allah accepted your tawbah. Allah accepted your apology. Allah accepted your repentance. So then Kaab said, then I entered the masjid. When I came in, I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sitting. Around him are people. One of the people, his name was? Talha ibn Ubaidillah, remember that wonderful name. Talha ibn Ubaidillah, Ka'ab said. When is Ka'ab saying the story? Remember the intro I told you? He's telling you the story when he's, when he's what? Very old. Very, like I'm talking like maybe decades later, Allah knows best. So he said, when I walked in, Talha ibn Ubaidillah got up and he started rushing towards me. وَهَنَّأَنِي He came, shook my hand and he greeted me and he embraced me. And he said, Wallahi la ansaha la Talha. He said, Wallahi, I will never forget what Talha did to me. He was the only one from the Muhajireen, the immigrants, who got up and walked to me to greet me, to congratulate me. Subhanallah, probably Talha does not remember, correct? Maybe he doesn't remember that I got up and I, said, I did that. But sometimes these moments that you do to people are moments that they will never forget for the rest of their lives. Maybe it's a congratulations for passing the MCAT. Maybe it's a letter that you wrote, uh, a like for a post, a, a comment, right? Something, he's like, I'll never forget that. I, for example, I will never forget that when my dad passed away, Sheikh Rid Basuni called me, مثلا, for example. In his very busy schedule, he called me. He said, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have rahmah uh, on your father and so on. These moments, not that you're upset at others, la wallah, but sometimes these moments, until now, I can't forget it, subhanAllah, right? I'll never forget. For example, there's one Sheikh I love so, so, so much, so much. So many years ago, when I hardly ever used to see him, like except there's a lot of people around him, I loved him so much, but I wasn't really uh, strong enough to express that love to him. So then I was like walking and I see him getting to his car. So I was like having eye contact, you know, the awkward eye contact. So he saw me and, they, and mashallah, he's a very intelligent man. So he looked at me. He said, Ta'al, come here. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> he said, Ta'al, Ta'al. So then he came and then he gave me a hug. And I just cannot forget that moment. That was maybe 10 years ago, right? But subhanAllah, these moments. And I shared that story with him. And he probably doesn't remember at all. So... Kaab says, I will never forget Talha standing up, rushing towards me and shaking the hand. I'll never forget that. Then he says, then I went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he said, said salam. And without a doubt, he got a response to his salam. Wa alaykum as salam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Then Kaab says, Ya Rasulullah. Then the Prophet tells him, Ya Kaab, abshir. Ya Kaab, congratulations for what? For Allah accepted your forgiveness. But you know what he tells Kaab? Ya Kaab, congratulations for going through today is the best day you have ever lived in your life. And when the Prophet tells you what's the best day, then nothing beats that day. Agreed? The best day of your life is not the day you graduate, though that's nice. It's not the day you get married, though that's great. It's not the day you get a job, though that's phenomenal. But the greatest day of your life is the day Allah accepts your apology. It's the day Allah erases your sins 
and substitute it into good deeds. That's the greatest day of your life. May Allah grant it to all of us. Ya Rabbil Alameen. He says, بِخَيْرِ يَوْمٍ مَرَّ عَلَيْكَ مُنْدُ وَلَدْكَ أُمُّكَ So Ka'b ibn Malik says, Ya Rasulullah, is this forgiveness coming from you or from Allah? مِنْكَ أَمْ مِنِ اللَّهِ He says, لا, it's from Allah. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not like me making dua for you. It's Allah Jalla Jalalu. He revealed ayat about the situation. Allah revealed Quran. He revealed Quran that will be recited till the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And we'll touch on these verses. So then Ka'b says two things to the Prophet. Two of three. The first one when he asked him, is this from you or from? The second thing he says, Ya Rasulullah, I promise because of Allah accepting my repentance, I'm going to donate every single penny I have. كل مالي صدق في سبيل الله ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. For Allah and His Messenger, all my money. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, No, don't donate all of your money. At least keep some with you. So he said, Okay. By the way, this hadith that I'm sharing with you is one hadith in the Bukhari, one hadith, this whole thing. And there's obviously some parts that I might have forgotten while I'm narrating the hadith. But one of the scholars said, You can extract 100 lessons from this hadith. 100. And wallahi, this was so great of a hadith, so great of a story that I called Sheikh Ammar al-Shukri who had a, a short session in, in, uh, relatively about two and a half hours, three hours on YouTube and I strongly encourage you to watch it. One of the best videos I've watched and heard about this hadith is called The Redemption of Ka'b ibn Malik, Ammar al-Shukri and you will not regret it, trust me. Wonderful, phenomenal way of teaching it. And I heard this and wallah, I feel like, you know what? Maybe we have to do a series about Ka'b bin Malik. This is hadith, subhanAllah. Why? Because he just said, I will donate all of mine. The Prophet said, don't. So now we learn something, fiqh aspect, that in Islam, you should not donate all your money like that. So he said, keep some of your money. So he said, okay, I'll keep a share from Khaybar. You know, oh, brother, brother, I have a question. Yes, what is it? Well, Abu Bakr Siddiq, one time, he donated all of his money. That's true. But that was a case of an emergency. That was a battle, life or death. That's a different situation. Here he's doing sadaqah that is general. Fair enough. So here he said, you know what? I'll donate everything. The Prophet said, no, keep some of your money. He said, okay, I'll keep some of it. See, another lesson. Don't argue with the Prophet. Don't think you're more holy. No, no, I, I got it. La, keep some of it. The last thing Ka'b ibn Malik tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and please pay close attention. He said to him, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, inna min tawbati. Part of my repentance, out of appreciation and gratitude for Allah accepting my forgiveness, I promise that I will never for the rest of my life ever say anything except the truth. Can we make the promise of Kaab? Can we make the promise of Kaab that you will never say a word that comes from your mouth except that it's a word of truth? You don't want to lie, you can refrain. You don't want to lie, you can tell them, I don't want to talk about it. You can find ways, but don't you ever say a lie. And he said, Fawallahi, I don't know anyone that was blessed for saying the truth as much as I was blessed. For it was a moment that Allah saved me. Why? Because Allah also revealed verses for those who lied. Allahu Akbar. You remember the 80 plus people? Remember? How, did, when they were walking, did people say, Salamu Alaikum to them? Did people say, wa alaykum as -salam? They lived 50 days. No one knows that they're liars. Remember the guy, oh, I got food poison and they didn't. I broke my arm, remember? My wife was delivering all these examples. They got away with it for how long? 50 days. But I can guarantee you something. These 50 days, they were still not comfortable. I promise you, why? Because the Prophet says, riba." Lying always makes you uncomfortable. Whenever you lie, you're uncomfortable. What if I get caught? You didn't get caught, but you're still uncomfortable. So you say the truth, you might get in trouble, but the longer outcome will always be more fruitful. And that's what Ka'ab said. I will never ever lie. I will always say the truth as long as I live. And may Allah make us like Ka'ab. So with that being said, are we ready inshallah to go through the verses? Bismillah for the next 30 minutes. Ready inshallah? Bismillah. There are verses 117, 118, and 119 of chapter number 9 from Surah At-Tawbah. May Allah grant us barakah, Amir Rabbil Alameen. Oh, other, other way, Bismillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse starts by saying, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, Laqad Taab Allahu Ala Nabi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
There's a lot that can be said. Do prophets commit sins? Do they do major? Do they do minor? There's a lot of talk. But there's one thing to share with you for the sake of time. Never does a prophet say anything about the religion that is wrong. Fair enough? When it comes to religious specific matters, they never make mistakes. Never ever. Proof? Allah says, وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُرْحَىٰ When it comes to revelation, it's always from Allah uh, to the Prophet, to Jibreel. Jibreel tells the Prophet, there's no mistakes in that. There's another ayah. Allah says, عَفَ اللَّهُ عَنْكَ In the same surah, Allah says to the Prophet, may Allah forgive you. لِمَا أَذِنْتَ لَهُمْ Why did you accept their excuses? You should have waited hatta until it was distinguished the truthful from the liar. No problem. So Allah has forgiven Rasulullah and you can tell the standard Allah's holding the Prophet is very, very extremely high. Then Allah says, I forgave the Prophet and وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ The immigrants, those who were in Mecca and they moved to Medina and the supporters Ansar. الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُ فِي سَاعَةِ الْعُسْرَةِ Allah says, I forgave them, those who followed the Prophet وسلم, during the what? What's the word? Hour of great difficulty. When Allah tells you it's difficult, what is it? Mahadi will say it's easy. Right? I can handle this. No, no, if Allah tells you it's difficult, it's difficult. Remember? The heat of the sun, very long trip, huge enemy, the Roman Empire. There was not much water. It was harvest season. Remember, like tax season. No way, that's when you get your money. All that put on the line. I'm going to go join the Prophet ﷺ. So Allah says, Allah forgive those who follow the Prophet ﷺ during the hour of Difficulty. Can we appreciate a word here? What's the word you want to appreciate? About every word, every letter. But the word I want to look look into more is what word? Huh? Hour. What? Hour. Sa'a. It was not a sa'a. Was the trip a sa'a? The trip was a long trip. It was days and weeks, and Allah knows if it exceeded a month or so. But it was a long, long trip. But Allah says sa'a. Because no matter how difficult the situation may be when you Fulfill an obligation of Allah is difficult, but it's just a moment. And what you will get of reward is so long that makes that difficult moment a sa'a. Just a moment. Allahu Akbar. How difficult it can be to wake up for Fajr. Be honest, uh, Ya Rabbi, right? You wake up, you're struggling, cold water, you wait till the water warms up, right? You're like, I'm wasting water, is that haram? Like, but I want water, it's a ni'mah. And you're going through this, I feel you, right? But then you're waiting, you're exhausted, and you do this. Right, and then you make wudu and you forgot your right arm, and like, oh my god, okay. Then you go back to the right, and you're struggling, suffering, right? Hardship, sa'a, it's a moment. When sa'a, it doesn't mean 60 minutes. And you go pray, not fajr, the two rak'ahs before fajr, the sunnah of fajr too. What's the reward of the two rak'ahs of fajr? Rasulullah said, go ahead. Hawil, try, take a shot. What's the reward? Ahsant, Allah barik fiqh. May Allah grant you that reward. Say, I mean, Ahsan, Ya Batal. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Raka'ata al-Fajr, the two raka'at before Fajr, khayrun min dunya wa ma fiha, is more rewarding to you, will benefit you more than someone tells you you own earth and whatever is on it. If someone tells you all the stocks of Tesla will be yours, or you choose to get the reward of the two raka'at before Fajr. If you knew the reward of the two rak'at before Fajr, you're like, no, I want the reward of the two rak'at of Fajr and not all the stocks of Tesla and the millions and the mansions and the cars and everything. Allahu Akbar. If this was the reward of the two rak'at of Fajr, then what in the, what in the world is the reward of? Salat al-Fajr. <laughs> Don't miss out. Right? Sa'a. A moment. But look at the reward that you get. May Allah protect us and forgive us. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah said, Sa'a. Whatever heart you go through for Allah, Allah will always produce more good than what you went through. May Allah protect us. But Allah also forgave them. Why? Because some of them, some of them, فَرِيقٌ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا كَادَ يَزِيقُ قُلُوبٌ قُلُوبُ فَرِيقٌ What? مِنْهُمْ Some of them, because of how hard it was, they start to doubt. Uh, how do I, do I really have to go? Like, is there any excuses? Remember the doctors know I shared with you. I'm going to fail the test, the exam. Um, like, all of us have to go. Like, they're struggling. So Allah said, even them who went through this, Allah will forgive them. But because they tried, you have to appreciate this. Allah says in the last ayah in Surah Al-Ankabut, it's one of my favorite. When all, every ayah is beautiful. But this ayah, so motiva motivating. You want motivational ayat, right? Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا If you try to become a better person, if you try to be on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know what Allah says? لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا The last ayah, of the chapter known as the spider, Al-Ankabut. Okay? Allah says, and I will guide you to the straight path. You gotta show Allah that you are trying. 
You just take that step and Allah will take you. But you have to take that step and may Allah protect you and forgive you, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So they tried, so Allah helped them out. Then Allah ends, ثم تاب عليهم to re-emphasize because what did Allah just say? Their hearts deviated, right? Almost. So not to make you feel too bad, I forgave you. So it's being repeated. ثم تاب عليهم إنه بهم رؤوف الرحيم Allah to them is very gracious and Allah is very merciful. The second ayah, the beautiful stuff, all of them are beautiful. Allah says, وَعَلَى الثَّلَاثَةَ I didn't just forgive the Prophet, the immigrants, and the Ansar, but also the three men. The three men. Ka'b, Hilal, and Murara are also forgiven. الَّذِينَ خُلِّفُوا Those who were left behind, not the battle, those who were left behind regarding the acceptance of excuses. I hope you guys got that. Because when the, they came to give their excuses, the people, the Prophet accepted, accepted. For them, they were held behind. There's no response yet. It's like when you get your license, but you don't actually get the card, you get a paper, right? Like a temporary hold. So those who were held for 50 nights, they too are forgiven. Check this out. Allah describes to you how they felt. Three explanations. Allah said the way they felt as if earth became so tiny, though it was very vast. Allahu Akbar. It's so painful. They felt so sad after being boycotted for 50 nights as if they were living in a tiny cell. They can walk, they can travel everywhere. But subhanAllah, some emotions only Allah knows about. People look at you, they think you're fine, but only Allah knows that you are in prison. Ya Allah, may Allah forgive us. May Allah release us. May Allah grant us freedom, Ya Rabbil Alameen. The proper freedom. Then Allah says, number two of three, وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ Not just that the world seemed tight, they could not stand their own selves. Ya Allah. They choked. Even their own selves, they felt tight. As if, subhanAllah, يعني, I'll give an example of a fish in a bowl, but that fish is in an ocean. But the fish pretends in an ocean that it's in a bowl. Ya Allah, stuck. I can't go. I can't walk. I can't breathe. I'm struggling. And you know what happens? This is what happens when you love someone so much and you disappoint them. Agreed? You love someone so much and you disappoint them. How hurt do you become? I can't believe I did that to my mom and dad. I can't believe I did that to my spouse. I can't believe I did that to my child. I can't believe I did that to my friend. You feel horrible. And there's no greater pain than disappointing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was never as ready. Many of us here never knew we will have what we have today. Agreed? Many of us here never knew we will drive the car that we have today. Many of us here never knew we'll have the cash that we have today. And what have we done? I hope we're much better than before. Ya Rabbil Alameen. And you realize from Kaab that what we're missing is not the means sometimes. Because Kaab never had stronger means than Tabuk. And he still did not go. What we miss sometimes is not the money, is not that physical strength, it's that really strong heart. May Allah protect us. And sometimes, Wallahi, remember this, sometimes Allah can make people not so rich for their sake. Please remember that. Sometimes Allah protects you. I know some parents may get angry, but please be patient with me. Please be patient. And understand there's multiple ways to look at it. Sometimes Allah may protect you from going to medical school. Allah's protection. You tried, you did, you studied, you failed, you cried, you dua, and still don't go. Allah's rahmah. You don't know what would have happened. You never know. How many people we know personally were so active in the masajid, right? Always there, always attending, always delivering, and so on and so forth. Not like they got occupied with other things that are great. May Allah protect all of us. Same, I mean. But it's like when I, elsewhere, I got a job at this company. Are you helping your community? No, well, I'm just very busy with this thing and so on. But are you giving back in any way? No. Subhanallah. May Allah protect us. And Ya Rabbil Alameen, give us what's best for us. Say, I mean. So this is what they're going through. So then Allah says the last part. And they came to the conclusion. The final conclusion they came to it. There is no one that can help me from Allah's anger except Allah. Done. No one can help you and I feel better, better than Allah. That's it. That was the conclusion. It's over. To them, it's a no-brainer. Usually, when you fear someone, what do the teachers tell us? When you fear someone, what do you do? There's a thief coming your way. Usually, what do people do? Go ahead. They run away from them, right? You run away. He's here, you run away. There's a dog. How many of you, how many of you ran out of, from dogs? Dog, a kelp. Ah, ya Rab. La ilaha illallah. And you jump and you do all kinds of stuff. Running, a dog came, you fear something, you run away from it, right? You're told to stay, whatever. Allah alam. But what happens when it comes to Allah, the best of examples? 
is when Allah is angry at you, there's nothing better for you to do than run back to Allah. And allow me for this example, not a perfect example, but a child and their parent. It's an example we hear a lot. A child goes to a store and he messes up something very bad, breaks a jar, okay? He's a Kroger, whatever. Nutella, Nutella, Nutella. And it drops and it breaks. What is it in this kid's mind that he has to pay for it? No. People are going to think he's weird? No. Uh, people are going to yell at him? No. He's worried about one and only thing. Mom. <laughs> not the cops. Not being in jail. He'd rather be in jail. I'd rather go to prison. Now, Bismillah. <laughs> Please, before mama comes. But what does a child do? Everyone is like, it's okay, sweetie. It's fine. Right? Everything is just okay. I'll pay for it. Uh, auntie, uh, sister, whatever. Don't be angry. Now, the kid, though everyone is nice, everyone is smiling, he knows something. The kid knows no one can help me but mom, from mom. <laughs> no one can help me from mom's anger except mom. So what happens? The kid runs, mama. <laughs> and he hugs the mom. And she is so angry. Then when he does this, I know you moms, all the bad cops out there, right? Right? And subhanAllah, it happened to us, I'll share with you two days ago. Actually not, was it yesterday? Two days ago. So we were having iftar, me, my wife, and my kids. Then I have my youngest, Hiba. May Allah bless all our children. So we're eating, and she was like yelling, Mama! Mama! And you're supposed to be sleeping. <laughs> and then she's yelling and crying. You're supposed to be sleeping. So then like, my wife says, okay, let me see what's going on. Brother, you should have got up. Okay, relax. I'm hungry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So then my wife, she got up, and then she went to the room. Then my wife came to me. She said, Majid, come see what Hiba did. So we walked in, and it was a mess. She had lotion all over Okay, uh, Avin or whatever. She had, a slow, it was like a bucket, not like the one that, whatever. Forgive me, I don't know my terms, but it's okay. May Allah forgive us. Okay, so she did this and she probably played. Like, oh, so cool. She did this. <laughs> and she made wudu. <laughs> right? And it was all over the bed and all over the sheet. And what was she saying? Mama! Because she knows no one will save her from mama except mama. <laughs> Because wallah, wallah, baba can do something about this now, right? How else I got this? Nah, give away, I got this. Nah, no way. Even the kid knows. And in a way, we are children, right? In a way, we're still, subhanAllah, may Allah protect us and forgive us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. When Allah is angry at you, what drink you're trying to drink to forget about Allah? What smoking of weed are you trying to do to make you forget about the pain that you're suffering? What friend you want to hang out with and what club do you want to dance at to make you feel the pain they're going through? I swear by Allah, the one who made you and made me, this will do nothing but add pain to your pain. And you realize, oh, you know what? I, oh, don't think, don't act all eloquent on me. <laughs> I know, it's very, secret, it's very simple. I log off. What do you mean? I log out. You're saying I feel pain because I made Allah angry. I'll just not make Allah important to me. Done. I'll just say Islam is not important and I will not care about Islam no more, then I will no longer have that pain. I tell you, and now I didn't swear, but now I swear, Wallahi, you just added an exponential level of misery to yourself. Exponential misery. The one you're running away from, and it, the one you're trying to cut off, is the one that you need more than anyone in the world. Because Allah said, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Because Allah said, whoever goes astray, the further away you go from Allah, the more miserable your life will be. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So, وَظَنُّوا أَلَّا مَلْجَأَ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا إِلَيْهِ Ready for this? Ready for this? ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُ شوفوا, I have how many minutes? 19? 18 minutes. Wake up with me. What do you mean? I was with you for an hour and 40 minutes. Wake up. It's okay. Bismillah. May Allah forgive us all. Say Ameen. Ya Allah, ready? Very important. ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُ then Allah, we have to understand here. Then Allah turned to them in mercy so that they may turn to Allah in repentance. What does that mean? Ibn al Qayyim has a very nice statement which means your repentance, Bismillah, your repentance is sandwiched between two of Allah's repentance. Okay, let's do a very simple diagram. All right, you have step one, step two, step three. That's how repentance works. Most of the lectures that I may deliver that you might have heard, most of things on YouTube, whatever, halaqat, nasajid, is about this. It's about step two. 
you seek Allah's forgiveness, or oh Allah forgive me, or oh Allah alhamni. And then they speak a little bit about this that Allah accepted. So number one is from Allah. Number three is from Allah. One and three are from? Number two is? So your repentance is sandwiched between two repentances. It's like a bun, like a burger, right? They have bread, meat, bread. So what is this? What does it mean? ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah accepted, the, uh, not accepted, Allah returned to them. That was step one. That's what many of us don't talk much about, which is Allah opening the door for you. Allah gave them the tawfiq. The first repentance, because this is repentance from Allah, this is repentance from, forgive me, one more to help me out. From? This is from? And this is from? This is assistance and help. This is acceptance. This is the job posting. This is congratulations, you got the job. This is your submission of your resume. Fair enough? So, ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah opened the door for them. Tawfiq, may Allah grant it to all of us. Ya Rab, open the door for them. They made tawbah, Ya Allah, forgive us. I'll never do it again. I promise I'll make up for it. Ya Allah, I regret what I did. I'll do everything I possibly can to do the good deeds, to erase the bad deeds. Excellent. Then, congratulations, you have been accepted. So repentance from Allah, you and from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two moments of benefit. Ready? Two moments of benefit. Number one is that many people, they wait for this. Sometimes you have to pray for that first. Many people, they want to quit smoking, sah? Many people, they want to start praying, correct? So uh, they say, you know what? I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, go for hajj, and then uh, I'm going to go hajj, and I'm going to make tawbah, and I ask Allah to, uh, to forgive me and everything. But some people are not reaching that point. How many people want to quit smoking, but they're struggling? Sometimes, as one of the mashaykh said, you have to ask Allah to help you repent. Not, you're not able to repent. So, yeah, Allah, help me repent. Do you know any hadith, any ayah that sounds familiar? One, once again, yeah, Allah, not forgive me. You're not able. I can't. I can't. I need to quit. I'm, I'm quitting. I'm done smoking. You cannot. But you say, yeah, Allah, help me quit. Yeah, Allah, help me seek forgiveness. Does that helping thing sound familiar? Any dua? Go for it. I mean, Allah yahfudhik wa yibarik fiki, ya Rab. Excellent. May Allah bless her and protect her. She said, yes, there's a dua the Prophet told us to say after every salah, at the end of every salah, Oh Allah, help me remember you. Ya Allah, help me thank you. Ya Allah, help me worship you right. One more, one more from the Quran. Ahtin. Ahsanti, may Allah protect you. Rabbi zidni ilma, oh Allah, increase me in knowledge, right? Yes, he's going to go learn, but I want more. Ya Allah, help me, assist me. One more. Ahsanti, mashallah, tabarakallah. May Allah protect you and make you grateful for every ni'mah Allah gave you. Say, I mean, who said that? Rabbi, oh Allah, help me, thank you. Mish, he didn't say thank you. He didn't say what? He didn't say thank you. He didn't do it. He said, Ya Allah, help me, say thank you. And that's what we should be praying for, many of us. We're not able to make tawbah. So Ya Allah, help me make tawbah. Sulaiman said, Oh Allah, help me. Rabbi, awzi'ni an ashkura ni'amataka allati an'amta alayhi. Thank you, help me, thank you for the blessing that you have given me. And what a beautiful thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us all. Make sure that you repent back to Allah and I'm going to give you some really good news. Don't take off your two outer garments and give them to me for those who were here before. Ready? One of the greatest signs that Allah accepted your repentance. One of the greatest signs that your sins are erased inshallah is the fact that you asked for your sins to be erased. Kif. One more time. One of the greatest proofs that Allah has forgiven you is the fact that you asked Allah to forgive you because you would have never been able to ask Allah to forgive you unless He already opened the door for you. And never will you do step two except that He will definitely do step three. Like, did Allah accept? Did you ask Allah to forgive you? Done, inshallah. You're optimistic, you're hopeful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you. Allahumma barik. Time is blessed. Alhamdulillah. Ramadan, ya 13 minutes. Almost one line. The last ayah, you saw the lot, lot, first ayah was long, 117. 
118, 119, Allah summarizes the whole story for you in a short ayah. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu. Or you who believe. So everybody pay attention. Because we told you, when was that? Before Ramadan, we had a session. Ibn Mas'ud said, never does Allah say, oh believers, except there's a command that you and I have to do. So are you guys ready, inshallah? Are you ready? Say inshallah. Two things. Ittaqullah. That's one. There's two. This one. Ittaqullah. Be conscious of Allah. Be mindful of Allah. Make Allah the most important thing to you. Ittaqillah. Mean, protect yourself from Allah's anger. Ittaqillah. What do we do because of the COVID? We wear a mask. We take a shot. We take a booster. We do all things. We avoid large gatherings. All of this because taqwa from the corona. Protection from the COVID. Right? Allah is the best example. Ittaqillah. Your mask is doing what Allah told you to do. Your mask is avoiding gatherings where Allah is being disobeyed. And that's how you protect yourself more and more and more. People do all these things, multiple masks, shots, boosters, all that stuff. Why? I'll do every means possible to protect myself from the corona. You do everything possible to protect yourself from adabillah. Everything. Well, I attended a halaqa, that's enough. That one another one. A sadaqa, a charity, haram, avoid. Dodge, do some matrix, whatever, move from there, move from that, do the wajib, avoid the haram, prohibition. That's life. And one time you fail, one time you pass, may Allah make us all pass, and may Allah repent to us, step one, so we can repent back to Him, so He can repent back to us and accept Amir Rabbil Alameen. So, attaqullah. And the conclusion, step number two, wakunu ma'as sadiqeen. Allah is telling you what saved Ka'ab ibn Malik was saying the truth. Agreed? We clearly saw that his statement of truth, though that it was brought so much pain, this is what saved Ka'ab ibn Malik radiallahu an. What did Allah say? Be with the who? The truthful. And who does this include? The three men, which the world boycotted, right? The ummah boycotted. They were sinners, major sinners, 50 days ago. And now they're role models for all of humanity. Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, when I came across this, I said to myself, the previous ayah indicated that they committed a sin, but Allah forgave them. And now Allah is telling us that they are what role models. I said to myself, what a beautiful deen we have. What a beautiful religion we have. That you can bounce from a mistake. You can bounce from a sin to the extent, not that you're one of the regular people. You become from the lowest of low to the highest of high. This is Islam. From repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like you, you go all the way down, like, oh, I'm down. No, this is going to make you jump higher. Because you bent your knees, so you're going to jump higher. You're going to jump higher, and then you jump after you make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They became role models. And Ka'b ibn Malik says, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing me to say the truth. And he made a promise. Now he's very old, he, he sh shares it. He says, Alhamdulillah, I was strong enough to say the truth, and I will never lie. I will never lie, and I will never lie. Because Allah revealed words. They are the worst of painful words any human can hear. These two ayat, I will not go in detail, but these two ayat were revealed for who? The ones who lied. I'll just read them off, will not go into depth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min rajim, sayahlifuna billahi lakum idhan qalabatum ilayhim, litu'ridu anhum, fa'aridu anhum. When you return, O oh Muhammad, when you return from what? From the battle, right? When you return from the battle, they will swear to you by Allah. Remember food poison, death in the family? They will swear to you by Allah so that you may leave them. So leave them. إِنَّهُمْ رِجْسِ They are evil people. وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمُ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ And these people will be going to Jahannam. Ya Allah, imagine now this surah is Al-Fadiha. This surah is Tawbah. There's no Bismillah at the beginning, right? This surah, Bara'a. This surah is the exposing surah to the Munafiqeen. This happened at the end of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life. People start to indicate and know more and more about the Munafiqeen. The second ayah and last ayah Allah revealed here, يَحْلِفُونَ لَكُمْ Allah says, they came and swore, Wallahi, Wallahi, if I was able to. And Allah says, لِتَرْضَوْ عَنْهُمْ They swore to Allah, so you Muhammad and the Sahaba can be pleased by them. فَإِن تَرْضَوْ And if you Muhammad and the Sahaba and the Ummah are pleased by them, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَرْضَ عَنِ الْقَوْمِ الْفَاسِقِينَ then Allah will never be pleased by those who are astray. May Allah protect us. 
Ya Rabbil Alameen. You, we may lie to the world, but we may never ever lie to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Continuously repent to Allah. And the best way to keep you steadfast is to be with who? The truthful people. Beware when you're hanging out with someone who lies a lot. Someone right next to you, their mom calls them. Hello, so and so. Where, where, like, where are you? And they're right next to you and they say, I'm at the masjid when they're not. Or I'm at playing basketball when they're somewhere completely else and wrong. Beware of those friends. Do I tell you to cut them off? I tell you it's a red flag. I tell you this is dangerous. I tell you to beware. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Beware of being around those who encourage you to fake your resume, to put experiences that you never had, qualifications that you're not qualified for. Put that you are excellent in Excel. You are proficient in out of this and that application when you're not just to get the job. Wallahi, there may be no barakah in that. Beware. Be with those that will struggle. Be with those that will put the effort and they fail sometimes and they pass sometimes. And we will be tested day and night. Naam. I say day and night because never does a time came with so much trials and tribulation like today, as many of the ulama have said. We're reaching a point of fitan, of trials and tribulations, that someone perhaps may wake up as a Muslim, sleep as a kafir. Sleep as a Muslim, wake up as a kafir. That's how difficult our times have been. And you see it right, left, and center. You see people getting jobs and they're not qualified. Yes or no? And they lied. Well, I remember when I was in college, it was so painful. I had this one brother, okay, obviously no mention of names. Someone asked me in the break if the professor ended up knowing who got the doctor's note. No, the professor did not know and the guy gave him the doctor's note and everything was fine. All right, for those who were concerned about my friend. But I remember when we were about to graduate and I graduated, for those that remember, one of the worst recent recessions. It was horrible and there was no jobs. I applied for over 200 jobs. I shared some of this before with you before, but this part I did not share with you. I have others that graduated with me. And I remember one of them, Muslim brother, he faked his resume. He put experiences that he never had. I worked here in summer. You never went to the Saab. You never went anywhere. You stayed in the city. And he put that his references is so-and-so manager. You know who was the manager? Our other colleague. Well, I will never forget it. And what happened? He got a job and I didn't. Remember that letter Ghassan sent? And this comes like, do that, do that. But think subhanAllah, but then Allah opens the door for you. But sometimes Allah tests you. And remember, some of the ways that Allah brings you back to Him, sometimes is through pain. Sometimes the way Allah brings you back to Him is through pain. What does Allah say? We will make them taste. From the pain in this life. Dun al adabil. Before the great punishment in the afterlife. We, we punish them lightly here. We, we make them taste a little, little pain. Why? So perhaps they may return. Sometimes the best things that happen to us are the most painful moments. May Allah bring, make us strong. May Allah come back strong. May Allah make us of the sadiqeen and the muttaqeen. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. We're four minutes early and I'm going to stop, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.